That is just out, outrageous. You know, and and one of the and it's a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a rumor that I had always heard is that a lot of this stuff in a lab, uh, a good bit of it was actually improv, um, because he would take a phone call and it was make a wish foundation or this or that or him talking to a, a boardroom or something to that nature and he was just being himself and being funny and they were recording the whole time because it was priceless material oh, yeah. and they ended up using a good portion of it because it it was priceless and they couldn't let it go and they worked it into the film because his ad lib and improv were just you couldn't, you couldn't get rid of it. Yeah, it made so much to the effort, mm -hmm. and it was unmatched bar none by any. He did the same thing with Mork and Mindy when he was there with Jonathan Winters, the two of them together playing Mork and Murk, and they said he, he said the pioneers of television series on Channel GPTV Channel Eight did a special about him as a comedic icon after that, and they said the directors would just like have the cameras rolling. They would run out of film. They had like eight cameras running at all the time. And because it would run because they guys would just keep going and going and going. And then when it got to the editing floor, that's where the hard part was. You didn't know what to cut out and what to leave. And that's why they said half the script, Pam Dauber never knew what was gonna happen. She knew what she was supposed to say, but then she got into the, the act too. She started having to add live and bounce off of them. So it made her appreciate comedy more. Just like it helps us appreciate comedy. Now that we can, we know who Mrs. Doubtfire is. Mm -hmm. You put Janiah Doubtfire, you know? Iconic entities that will always stick with us. Okay, whether it's serious roles, like in um, Photo, um, Insomnia. Insomnia. Um, what was it? Alaska? No, maybe that was. I think that took place in Alaska. Insomnia. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, with, with, uh, uh, one of the serious roles that always caught me was Bicentennial Man. Bicentennial Man. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, that was really just a heartbreaker. This yeah. this being that was created as just a thing An artificial life, acquires a soul. Yeah. And, it and his own humanity by the end of the film. Exactly. It spoke volumes about what's going on in our culture. That was the ultimate Pinocchio story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Where he really went was. all his life to become a little boy, real boy, only to have that awarded posthumously after he had died. You know, but he, he wanted the wooden little the puppet looking for the blue fairy. You know, he wanted that magical effect just to have people accept him. And that's really what Robin is his achievement is. He had so many people around the world Accept him for what he was, and that is that's that's an elusive, ephemeral thing to be accepted by so many people for who you are. Yeah. You know, and I see on your um, for those of you who are able to look at September's newsletter, we put on a, a just a snapshot of a lot of the movies that we recognize almost immediately with Robin um, throughout his career. I think you've got 16 little snippets of, of his... Little frames? Yeah, frames of his movies. I was able to get 14 out of the 16. One I knew, but I couldn't place a name, and the other I had never seen. Well, why don't you go through the top list, and let's list all of them out for those who did get their um, um, newsletter. Do you want to switch it off, and you, you go first, and... Well, I, I'm going to give you the whole honor, okay. my friend. You go right ahead since you got 14 out of 16. All right, well... Um, at the top of your newsletter, you've got Carpe Diem, which I always liked Robin saying, Carpe Scrotum, she's <laughs> life by the balls. So here we go. <laughs> the first one is him doing a little stance as Mork from Mork and Mindy. Yep. And then let's see, we got um, uh, Good Morning Viet. Good Morning Vietnam! Excellent. Then, uh... What do we have there? Goodwill Hunting, mm -hmm. uh, Hook. I watched oh, that. Pen, I pen, watched that. Pen, the man. The day after oh. I heard that, it it was on Netflix, and I I could not help. It was the first thing I saw on Netflix that had him in it, and I good film, it. Jack. Yes, I mean it was <laughs> just top. It was um, top. Yeah. Original Dot Fire, as you said earlier. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, that's Dead Poet Society as he stands upon the desk. Captain, my oh, captain. captain. <laughs> um, there we've got uh, Jumanji. Oh my gosh. I, I've seen a meme online here recently. And it's him in Jumanji with the, the full beard. Yeah, and he's a wild man. He's just gotten back from the, uh, the inside the game. And at the top of the meme it says... The Who, uh, uh, um, um, the Rolling Stones, ACDC, The Cure, The Queen are all releasing albums this year. What year is this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then we got uh, the the homosexual Robin Williams. Oh yes, in the, the bird Fabulous. Cage. Then um, Patch Adams. Let's oh, see. Made the medical medicine yes. is the best. Laughter is the best medicine. Yes, laughter is the best medicine. Honk, honk. Um, we got toys. Oh uh, yeah! Night at the museum, which he was in what two? Yeah, he was in that. And amazing! I didn't put this one down, but that's he played one of two presidents. There he was Roosevelt. He played uh, in on um, Lee Butler's as as Eisenhower. Oh really? Did not even realize he played Eisenhower. He huh. Pulled it off. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, next, it looks like you got Flubber there. Oh, yeah. And then the, one of the ones I missed, just because I could not place the name, and you told me it was What Dreams May Come, oh. where he's with Cuba Gooding Jr. At, yeah. at this point, this is the penultimate movie because it deals with life and death and suicide, and it really takes a turn and pulls at your heartstrings. If you've never seen What Dreams May See Come, that movie. it is a bit odd yeah. and different, and, and it... Thought provoking, yeah. especially it's a very avant garde. But you will appreciate it now that he's passed yes. and his struggle yes. even more. Um, next on here, you do have Bicentennial Man. Excellent. Yes, <laughs> and then the one that I, the second one that I missed because I'd never seen it, Baron Munchausen. Baron Munchausen. Okay. Yep. Um, so is the King of the Moon. Uh, and then, of course, the Man of a Thousand Voices, the Genie and Aladdin. That's right, straight from Agrabah, the genius of the lamp! <laughs> 10,000 years! I need a little love in space. That's right. You know, it, <laughs> I, I'm a Disney fan. You know, not here recently. Their newer movies yeah. have not been up to par with their older ones. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite Disney movie. Really? But Genie is my all-time favorite yeah. Disney character. Yeah. Just... You know, the, the work he pulls off in that oh, movie yeah. is just... And I hate to say this, but even with the remakes, Frank Castellaneta tried to do it in the second one, mm -hmm. but it was not up to par that Robin came back for the third movie just to reprise the role of the genie. You know? I, I mean, the TV show, it was okay, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Robin Williams. Yeah. It was It didn't have that punch. I mean, ow. Are you okay there? Yeah. I actually punched my hand in one of your wishes there. Yeah. More forceful than I than more uh, you know, effective there. Um yeah, so we're going to miss this icon and but doing so we're going to use every bit of his comedy in our flavor, every bit of his storytelling. We will be telling tales from here until our own time passes, you know. Of what Robin Williams meant to us. You know, I, I was on Facebook the day it happened, and a friend, a Facebook friend of mine, said she heard the news and she immediately went in and told her two kids, which is, I think, seven and nine, and they're like, "Who?" Because they didn't grow up with Robin like we did. Yes, yeah. they can see a movie now, and future generations can see the past and the movies that he's done. But it won't have that same impact because he's just not around to make it relevant to the newest generations. Which is just, I mean, it's, it's so sad because he was just a wonderful he's human being. Character. A wonderful performer. Yeah. You know, it just... Thank God for syndication. Yep. <laughs> and since we're on the topic of, of deceased celebrities, I will... Yeah. Let's go ahead and give a, a small tribute to Miss Moisturize Me herself, Joan Rivers. <laughs> Cassandra, the 21st century. Yeah. Yes. And, and I say this with all sincerity because I think she would laugh at people making fun of her. She made fun of her own self. Oh, yeah. And parodied her own self. So, you know, I say that with full-hearted sincerity that she will be missed, too. 
she she became the queen of the red carpet. Yes. And towards the and how does someone so funny in your younger life just all of a sudden go into the queen of the red carpet and, well, and uh, if you know anything about her history which, only slightly which they've actually done several um since her passing mm -hmm. um introspective biographies she as a young struggling female com comedian comedian as they used to call them back in the 60s not comedian but comedian it had to be that distinction yeah, yeah. um she was too graphic and very forthcoming with modern discussions mm -hmm. and speaking about things that ladies ought to talk about. Yes, yeah, she was very out um, there. <laughs> from abortion to you know, PMS to living in the home, working in, in business, you know, what type of life should we lead, you know, children, rearing child, children, you know, all these elements that, you know, it, it really put her at a disadvantage at first. But once she got on Johnny Carson's show as a guest, he gave the nod and she was in. Once you got on Johnny's show, if he liked you, he made you. You got that nod and got yeah. to sit on that couch. And then exactly. it was, it was he, in. She impressed him so much. She was the only female to ever replace him as a guest host exclusively. I did not know that. Show. Yeah. So, but what happened was when she was about to go out on her own show, she did not call him that night. They had a falling out because he thought he took it as a personal attack. Mm. And so they had to take this second and took the ways. Which is really sad considering how close they were. Yeah. But um, she was in, in moving downward as far as, you know, not having a lot of film time and, and roles and whatnot. Still doing stand up. As she, aging actresses right. often, you know, happen. But then she ended up starting her own QVC line with her jewelry. Starting, she's written several books. Yeah. Yeah, and then she, her daughter, started a new cable show, and she's had thousands of faces. Literally, yes. talked about the man of a thousand faces, Robin. She's had them all, you know, yes. tucked, snipped, and squatted upon, you know. And and we jest, but we we know that somewhere she would laugh at what we're oh, doing, because she's already she, said it. Exactly, she's already said it. You know. And so I just wanted to bring up her because that's, that's you know well, she's well met. You know, in fact, even to bring up, she actually shows up in Shrek. Was it the Shrek that she actually showed up as the uh, with the red carpet? She was making fun oh, of yeah, herself. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. That yes. was Joan Rivers yes. voicing her own self in the, the animation of Shrek to show that that's that's who she had become. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she was, you know, again, she'll be missed also. You know, probably not too mostly in the middle of a shower where you know, she's being filmed by her mom just. Breaking into the bathroom for a little personal time, but you know, what can you say when you live in a family? You, know, you live with a disclaimer in your house, it's a problem. <laughs> Anything can happen and will. Okay, well, those are definitely characters in our lives you know, that we're going to miss Here. You know, and be involved with. Um, so I thought I'd mention a couple of things with creativity on the website. Okay. Um, Binders has opened another store, actually, um, near Pond City North. Um, over at 650 North Avenue Northeast in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they're actually holding special um, panel sessions for artists and up-and-coming sales over the next couple of months with a new grand opening. So we're big on promoting local stores that are affordable to everyone when it comes to creativity and creative materials, mm -hmm. especially binders. So, yeah, yay team. Congratulations. Good for you guys. Go sell stuff. Stay open. <laughs> That's the problem in Atlanta. Start a new business, and the week you're gone. So you got to be careful with that. 